And it's a special day here at Dodgers Nation on Dodgers Dugout Live because today we are joined by the legend, Mr. Bob Nightingale. You can follow him at B Nightingale, of course. He's an MLB insider for USA Today. Bob, a busy month for you. You got the All-Star Game. You got the Hall of Fame. You got the trade deadline coming up. Thank you so much. We know how valuable your time is. Thanks for joining us here on Dodgers Dugout Live. Thanks for having me, Don. Good to see you. Yeah, great to see you and great to talk to you, of course, is this is the month where guys like you shine. You have the rumors percolating. Sometimes you get exhausting, so many players. But now we actually get to see moves hopefully being made this month. And really what I want to start with is the expanded postseason. Now, at the moment, 25 of 30 teams still are really in the mix. When you look at the wild card, we look at the division races. How much has that impacted the asking prices at the deadline compared to before? But it was only like, you know, as you said, only about five teams out of the race. So it's a seller's market. And, uh, you know, everybody else is kind of in this thing. And, uh, you know, the, the big thing is, okay, you know, are you going to make a trade just to get in the playoffs? Or are you really serious about getting to the World Series? And I think what happened last year with the Arizona Diamondbacks kind of changed the course for everybody. You know, Texas Rangers to a degree. But the fact that, you know, Dimeback just snuck in the playoffs with 84 wins, we saw what happened, you know, got to the World Series. It's not like everybody's got that in the back of their mind, like, hey, just get in, anything can happen. So uh, there's a lot of teams that, you know, are going to say, hey, we're going to uh, buy or, or slightly improve, but we're definitely not going to sell because of what the Dimebacks did. Absolutely. You look at the success they had. They beat this Dodgers team last year in the NLDS. They went on to make an appearance in the World Series. Now, we look at this Dodgers team. It's kind of hard to believe that the offseason, you commit over $1.2 billion. You sign Shohei Otani, Yamamoto, Teoscar Hernandez. You trade for a glass. Now, extend him. But it appears that they still have some moves they could make. You could add to the outfield. You could add to the shortstop position. You could add another starting pitcher what's the sense that you're getting right now when it comes to the Dodgers and what they're trying to accomplish at the deadline well I think they definitely uh would like to get you know another outfielder I think that's been a problem I don't think that's gonna be a uh, an easy fix and I think they say you know what we gotta get help there uh shortstop I would say you know what who knows if Mookie Best is gonna be the answer but the fact he's gonna be out this long very unfair to put him back at shortstop. They expect him to be the uh, defensive guy to lead you to the World Series. I think they keep Rojas there. I really do. And uh, move Mookie back at, at second base. You know, could always move him back to the outfield. You know, not that he wants that, but say, you know what, for the good of the team, you're better off being in uh, right field. We can solve second base. So I think the whole thing is, is Mookie Betts. You know, they'll get some bullpen help. Uh, you know, you can always find that. And maybe one more starter. Uh, right now, it's, you know, relying on glass now and a lot of question marks. I don't think they thought Bueller would have these kind of struggles. Uh, Gavin Stone has stepped up, but may need one more starter. You know, a guy like, a, uh, say, a Zach Eflin I'm throwing out. You know, someone like that. We didn't even give up a ton for him. I know they've talked about, you know, they made an offer, too, for Gar Garrett Crochet and the White Sox. When your White Sox turned on the offer, it wasn't enough. But he's kind of an X factor. It's like, you know, Crochet has already pitched 15 more innings than his career high. So are you going to even have the guy available in September, October? If you do, it'd probably be an eliminated bullpen role. Yeah. And if you're a team like the Dodgers, Yamamoto, he's out right now with a rotator cuff injury. Walker Buehler hasn't pitched like the guy we saw a couple years ago when he had established himself as one of the best postseason pitchers in the game. Kirsch is coming back. But yeah, there are some questions about this starting rotation. Gavin Stone, as you mentioned, has been a breakthrough player for this team. But you mentioned Garrett Crochet. And you did report that the Dodgers did make that offer. What else can you tell us about that offer? And do you think it's a situation where the Dodgers are in the early stages of pulling off a big trade for crochet and do you expect them to come back with a bigger offer to get someone that could be a lights out pitcher in the postseason you could use him in a hybrid role you could even shut him down a little bit load manage him towards the end of the season to make sure that he's ready to go for october but do you expect them to continue to pursue that deal for crochet yeah i do i mean i think they'll just keep pursuing him until he's traded uh yeah the the uh, dodgers have never traded away that stud prospect that's come back to haunt him so they've been good about that. And I think the White Sox say, you know what? We got 15 teams on this guy. We know he's a valuable asset. We want to hurt. And we want, you know, uh, uh, someone's, you know, top, 
two or three guys, uh, you know, to give up a crochet. But, you know, he's only making eight hundred thousand dollars. You got him through two thousand twenty six. But you know, if your team is like, you know, how much are you going to give you down the stretch? Uh, he's never, you know, fished this long before. Uh, the White Sox plan to shut him down in the second half. You know, by you know maybe limit to uh, some innings in the bullpen. So it would certainly be a valuable guy in the bullpen. But just so there's that uncertainty about the guy. Yeah, and do you think that Crochet is going to be the best high upside, high ceiling arm available, or could the Tigers look to trade someone like a Tarek Skubal? Do you think Jack Flaherty could be available? Well, Flaherty would be available for sure, and that would be right up the Dodgers' wheelhouse. I don't see a Skubal being available. I don't. I don't know why they would trade him. I mean, he's a stud. He's got two more years of control, <clears throat> maybe three more years of control. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you'd have to give an absolute ton to get Scubo. I just can't see why Detroit would do that. Too big of a guy. Flaherty, I think Flaherty will definitely be gone. Yeah, Flaherty definitely makes a lot of sense for this Dodgers team. You did mention that, yeah, they haven't been burned too many times with giving up top prospects that went on to have awesome careers and really become elite talents. I mean, Jordan Alvarez is an example. They didn't know too much about him at the time when they moved him. As long as it's not Pedro Martinez, I'll be just fine considering the championship window that they're in. And you have Mookie and Freddie in their primes. You signed Shohei Otani. How much of a sense of urgency do you think the organization has knowing, you know what, we realize that people are going to say that this era of Dodger baseball isn't going to be a success with at least one World Series championship, possibly two. How much urgency do you think they're going to put in this trade deadline? How aggressive do you expect them to be knowing that? I think there's a lot of urgency in the sense that, you know, for the Dodgers, maybe probably more than any team in baseball, uh, it's World Series or bust. I mean, if they don't make the World Series, I think the whole season would be considered a disaster in L.A. with all that talent. You're still talking about, you know, for a full season, not having a World Series championship since 88. Yeah. Uh, you know, 60 games. A lot of things can happen in 60 games. So uh, just with all the money invested, the attention, what Otani's doing, uh, you know, spend the money for Yamamoto, I think they've got to get to the World Series or it's going to, uh, you know, be, be a long, long winner. Uh, I don't see, think you can say that about any other team, not even the Yankees or anybody else. Or if the Dodgers, I think they have to get to the World Series or it's going to be or they're going to have to say, OK, what went wrong here? Do we have to make changes? Uh, you know what are we can do for 2025. Yeah, absolutely. And that's music to our ears. We have a saying here, it's parades over prospects. So, yeah, we're all in on the Dodgers winning this season. But just kind of circling back to the outfield picture, you have Andy Pajes in center. You have. Teoscar Hernandez, who's been outstanding for the Dodgers in his role. Jason Hayward's out there. Chris Taylor has started to get back on track. He's going to start to get some runway at third with Max Muncie missing time. But when you look at adding a bat, an impact bat, a name that a lot of Dodgers fans have been clamoring for for quite some time is Randy Arozarena. Do you expect the Tampa Bay Rays to seriously consider dealing him at the deadline? And do you think there's a link between the Dodgers and Randy Rosarena? Could you see the Rays trading a Rosarena to the Dodgers? Well, I think they, yeah, they, the two teams actually have a you know, good relationship. I always uh, get to look at that, what uh, GMs deal with each other. Obviously, it, you know, we saw that in the glass now trade. They've done a lot of deals together, especially with Andrew Freeman, you know, being from there. Uh, guys, a great relationship with Eric Neander. Of, uh, of Tampa Bay. So, yeah. And, you know, the key with the Rosarina, I mean, obviously he's having a down year, yeah, but he steps up in crunch time. He loves the limelight. You know, you think he's uh, a, a guy to stick around. Well, he fit right into the Dodger culture. Uh, but, you know, he's a very flamboyant guy. But, you know, when the lights are on, you know, he steps up. So we'll see. That would be an interesting, interesting name for sure. Um, he's not a guy that really does much between April and September, but come October, he does. Absolutely. 11.04 OPS in the postseason. We want to see that in Dodger blue. And then you look at some of the other outfielders, Luis Robert Jr. This is a player who has all the tools. He's a guy who could be a perennial MVP, a perennial MVP candidate, all-star in his prime but lots of team control over three and a half years of team control. Is he somebody you think the White Sox are, are going to move at the deadline? And do you think that the Dodgers could maybe pull off a massive blockbuster with crochet and Robert jr? Do you think that's dreaming a little too big? They could. I mean, the thing about Robert jr. Is he's been a big disappointment. I mean, yeah. always been hurt. 
Uh, you got three more years of control. I think 15 million next year and then 20 and 20. That's a lot of money for a, uh, a guy who is underachieved, grossly underachieved. So I think the White Sox may hang on to him. Just I'm not sure they're going to get what they want for the guy. Uh, it's a, you know, who are you getting? Uh, last thing the Dodgers want is to trade some prospects for him. Then he breaks down like he's been breaking down for the White Sox. So uh, he's a big name, but he hasn't, he hasn't lived up to a potential, uh, not even close. Yeah, I mean, if you're the White Sox, I mean, you've struggled for years. You might be in the mix for a down-to-the-studs rebuild. Maybe you do move off him. But, yeah, as you mentioned, you're trading him when his stock is on the lower side and you want him to build that stock. You can still trade him in the offseason if he gets things going. Now, you talked about the shortstop position. You think that Miguel Rojas is going to stay there permanently. I know internally they've had some questions about his age. He's 35 and keeping a shortstop at a very demanding position healthy through that but there's also a name in Bo Bichette that's been floated around as a potential trade target for the Dodgers. One, do you think Bo Bichette gets dealt at the deadline? And two, could it be to LA? Do you think there's a natural fit there? And do you think that makes sense? I don't think they'll trade him. I mean, as embarrassing the season's been for the Blue Jays and they've had the most underachieving team the last few years, uh, you still have Bichette and Guerrero one more year. And, uh, you know, Bichette, you know, big name, he's done some nice things offensively. Defensively, he struggled uh, big time. And, you know, let's face it, I mean, the Dodgers are making moves for the World Series. Last thing you want is a young shortstop to, you know, kick some balls around uh, come playoff time. That's where Rojas sticks in, you know, no matter what he does offensively. A guy is that key defensively. So I think it's possible, but unlikely. I'm not sure the Blue Jays will even trade him. Yeah, I mean, big name, and we heard so many years, and Vladdy and Bo, that they were going to be that next group that was going to contend for World Series titles. Vlad's gotten it going. Bo Bichette, not so much. Now, I want to shift gears quickly to relievers. You mentioned the reliever market. You got Tanner Scott potentially available. How about Kenley Jansen? Could we see a return to L.A.? Kenley Jansen gets traded from Boston back to the Dodgers. Do you think that's a realistic possibility, Bob? Well, there's a possibility for sure. I mean, what hurts is that the Red Sox are still in the race. Uh, they may not, they may want to add. Uh, they're still hanging around. So I'm not sure they trade Jansen. Obviously, the Dodgers would make a lot of sense uh, just because they, uh, you know, they know him. They know what he can do. They know he can step up in crunch time. I would think a team like the Baltimore Orioles would be on Jansen too. You know, they don't want to rely on Craig Kimbrell. They like to have a closer. So, you know, Tanner Scott makes a whole lot of sense for a lot of teams. So I would think Scott would make more sense than Jansen. Uh, Scott would be a steeper price than Jansen because Jansen's making, I think, $16 million in the last year of his contract. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned a name like Zach Evelyn. Any other names you're hearing about the Dodgers and them being linked to? Yeah, you're not really. I mean, uh, there's only like, you know, two or three teams are actually, you know, being aggressive, trying to sell off their guys. And, uh, you know, the Dodgers have people out there. Everybody's can keep a look at the uh, open A's now with Mason Miller. I don't think he's going to be traded. Uh, you know, or, you know, it should be an all-star closer. Uh, Brent Rooker, a nice outfielder I have. So I think they'll get some uh, pieces, but I don't think they're going to get a star-studded guy and give up a, a prize prospect. He's, you know, never done that. I don't see them changing their MO now, hoping that a guy like Walker Bueller bounces back uh, you know, Kershaw is an X factor. Which Clint Kershaw are you going to get? Uh, Yamamoto will certainly be off the injury list, you know, at some point. And, you know, and, and, you know, Glass now is a stud. Uh, if you get a, a Glass now, a Bueller, Yamamoto, you know, you can, you can go all the way to the World Series if those three guys are pitching that you're capable of. Absolutely. I love that you point that out because, I mean, the way you lay it out, it's a little more reassuring knowing that they're going to feel like they're deadline acquisitions when you get Mookie and Muncie and Yamamoto and Kirsch and May. They have a lot of reinforcements on the way, so it's not like you have to panic and go out there and make a move. We've seen this organization stay patient, stay the course, so I think they're going to be opportunistic, but look a little too far in the offseason. I do want to ask you about Juan Soto. He's going to be the prize of the offseason. What's your read on Soto? Do you think he's back with the Yankees? A couple years ago, the All-Star Game Dodgers fans were chanting for him to sign with the Dodgers. I mean, they always have a ton of money. I mean, is there any possibility that Soto, I mean, they, need, they potentially need an outfielder. What do you have for his market right now and as it pertains to the Dodgers? 
And they just only two teams bidding for him be the Yankees and the Mets. I don't see Got him it. going anywhere else. Yeah. Uh, you know, more East Coast. I don't see the Dodgers jumping in that sweepstakes. I mean, he has paid seven hundred million dollars for yeah. uh, Otani, you know, three and a quarter for Yamamoto. So I don't see him doing that at all. Remember now, I mean, they saw him firsthand with the San Diego Padres. He didn't do anything for the Padres. Very disappointing with the Padres. The Padres gave up a lot of prospects and blew up in their face. They would love to have those prospects back. and wish they never made the Soto trade. So Soto's playing a lot better now in New York. They play in San Diego. So, you know, what if he does the same thing back in the uh, in, in California? So I'm not sure he's an answer. I mean, if he was the answer, the Padres should have been a couple World Series. They weren't. Yeah, you know how his Dodgers fans are. I mean, there comes a time where we think we're going to get every single player, every free agent. It happens every single year. But last question here, Bob. You look back a day after the trade deadline. What do you think ultimately the Dodgers do? Do they add an impact starter, a reliever, an outfielder? How big do you think they go? Just kind of just kind of throwing out there. What would be your guess as to where they end up after the deadline? I think they get an outfielder. Uh, I'm throwing a guy out like a Brent Rucker, you know, but an outfielder like that. Uh, and then also a, a bullpen arm, you know, not a, uh, you know, not a Mason Miller, but someone that can help them. Uh, I mean, and Jansen would be the high end of that sort of thing. A, a Tanner Scott makes a lot of sense and they've dealt, you know, before with the Marlins as well. And that's it. I don't think a big blockbuster move, you know, I don't think, you know, there may not be a big blockbuster move out there. There really won't. I told, you know, like we talked about crochet. Yeah. He's on top of his game, but you don't know what you're going to get the second half. I mean, why give up a lot for him if he's not going to pitch for you September, October? Yeah, it's a big roll of the dice to go after a crochet when you look at the fact that he's already in uncharted waters as far as how many innings he's pitched his first time as a full-time starter. Most innings he's pitched was actually back when he was at Tennessee. So I definitely agree. That's a major roll of the dice that is tough to see this Dodgers team doing. But based on your reporting, the fact that there has been communication means there's some level of opportunity they might pursue there. But Bob, we cannot thank you enough for joining us here. The name legend gets thrown out a little too lightly these days. Bob Knight. Gail, you are a legend in Major League Baseball reporting. Of course, you already follow him, so I don't need to give you his handle, but if you haven't yet, you can follow him at b 9 Gail. Go read all of his stuff at USA Today. We'll catch up with you at the All-Star Game. Hopefully, we'll see you there. But, Bob, thank you so much. Join us here on Dodgers Dugout Live. I'll see you in hot, hot Texas in a couple of weeks, Zach. Awesome, man. Hey, thank you so much, my man. And, uh, yeah, enjoy the great – have a great week, my man. Thank you for watching this clip from Dodgers Dugout Live, the number one Dodgers show on YouTube. We cover everything you need to know about your boys in blue in less than an hour. To check out new episodes, go to youtube.com slash Dodgers Nation TV Monday through Friday in the mornings. And be sure you're subscribed to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. For all latest Dodgers news, rumors, hype videos, interviews, giveaways, and more, you're going to find it right here at the number one channel for your boys in blue. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. And until next time. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.